Hey there, and welcome everybody to this very special, very unique Google Live broadcast. You got Josh Carey here with Pet Sittingology, and we, as you know, are making a movie. That's right, we are making the definitive pet sitting industry documentary to showcase and highlight all of the extraordinary amazingly professional people that dedicate their lives and their businesses to serving the pets and the humans in their local community and we are underway and I want to thank you for joining us and tuning in today what I mean by a unique video hangout is that this is actually a, um, a production meeting we are going to be bantering about where we are going with this movie, what our ideas are for this movie, what we've already accomplished for this movie, and how you must need and can get involved in so many ways in this documentary. Because what I love most about doing this kind of work, especially the movie making work, is that nothing in that industry operates isolated or in a bubble or alone. Making a movie, as you can imagine, takes the cooperation of a tremendous amount of people and this is going to be no different. I am not approaching this by myself. I'm not even approaching it with the help of a few select people. This is our industry's project. This is our industry's documentary. As you know, a couple of short weeks ago, I made the announcement that we're doing this, and the response was incredibly overwhelming. It was magnificently supportive, which just validated everything that I was hoping, because, you know, it, this kind of project, I'm scared. You know, there's so much, uh, uh, not really pressure, but there's so much to do that I just want it and need it to, to be a success. And with that, I need everybody on board in a variety of ways, least of which is getting involved on camera or getting involved with your thoughts and ideas because I don't certainly know it all or see it all or have all the answers. So what we're gonna accomplish here and today is I'm gonna go over what our ideas are, where our goals for this movie is, how you can get involved, who's already involved, and what we did last week, we spent four days in Northern Virginia following the amazing ladies behind All Friends Pet Care. You know Beth Greenberg Cattell. You know Pam Ahart Stewart. Well, we spent four days with them. Beth is actually on the call with us here today. And we met them. We spent time at their office. We met their three little doggies, their office doggies that, uh, um, that are with them each and every day. We also got to meet each of their mothers almost by surprise, and you'll hear how they fit into the big picture. We got to shadow two of their pet sitters and go on pet sits with them. So we really captured a lot. And most importantly, thanks to Beth, she organized a sit down meal with some wine and drinks and good food and good company with almost a dozen local pet sitters that have a combined experience of over 150 years in the industry. We got all of this on tape in the can for the documentary. We had a roundtable discussion talking about their history, the future of the pet industry and whatnot. So before I go much further, let me welcome my two uh, cohorts on the uh, on the line today. We have my pet sittingology communications director, Amy Madison, on board. Thanks for joining us, Amy. How are you? Good, Josh. I'm waiting to talk about this and hear more about it. Excellent. Well, uh, before we get to you, let me also welcome uh, Beth Greenberg Cotel to the show because she's the one who opened her doors and allowed us full access to everything she is doing. Now, she is not on camera, but say hello, Beth. You are there in voice. Hello, everyone. Yes, I had so much overload on camera last week that I decided to go off camera today. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I am here. I'm the, the voiceless face. Facebook. You are, and that's fine because uh, because we really do need your voice. So, um, 
everybody on board watching, please use that chat box because I'm going to elicit questions and feedback. If you have not, a little bit earlier today, I sent out an email directing you to PetSittingMovie.com. That's our new home on the web, PetSittingMovie.com. That is and will be the production site for all things Pet Sitting Movie related. Today, what you will see if and when you go there, and I really hope you do because this is our documentary, you're going to see a short questionnaire that's just getting your insight, your feedback, and asking you certain questions about your thoughts on this project. So when you go there, you can read more, but also in the chat box today, if you care to be on camera today with us, you actually could. There should be something off on the side of your screen that says request uh, something to join on camera. If you want, you do. It looks like June already requested. I don't know if that was an accident or not. But if you want to get on camera and talk to us, please do request and we'll bring you on. So let me start with, here's the thing, everybody on board watching. I know what my reason for desperately wanting to make this documentary now and why it's so important and why and how all the pieces of the puzzle came together. And I'm going to share that with you, but I also want to hear your why. I want to know why you believe it's important that we get everything out. And I want to hear why you feel that now is the time to get this important documentary out and also why is it so important that we do this together I'm sure we have very similar answers but it always is reassuring to hear from you in different ways and and, and, and just hear it a little differently and go from there so let me start with Amy Amy uh, some months ago when uh, I had it pseudo formulated in my head that you know what I want to do I think now is the time to put the pieces together and produce the definitive documentary for our industry. What were your thoughts? I thought that it would be a great thing because you need to tell the world that pet sitters have gone beyond just being your next door neighbor or your cousin or the boy across the street. Pet sitting has been has risen to a much higher level now and it's not just a matter of somebody coming into your house, taking care of your pet, leaving. There are so many different things that pet sitters can do, and pe people don't know about that. So I thought it would be a great, great vehicle to show people what can be, what pet sitting can be, and what they do. Because I've even spoken to my neighbors, and they have no idea. And I will say something like, "Well, did they? Well, they will say I had a pet sitter over to take care of my cats when I was out." And I said, did the pet sitter stay over? And they'd say, oh, wow, I didn't even know they would do that. So I think it's a great vehicle to get the information out to tell people that it is no longer just a casual thing. People actually make a good living at it. And I think that that's such an important part. Everything you said is absolutely on par with, with my thoughts and desires. And the fact that you said people actually make a good living from it, um, this is one of the reasons uh, I'm, I'm so honored to have been able to start with Beth and Pam in their business because make a good living is an understatement. Uh, some of you might know, and uh, she's not shy about sharing this, her and her business partner Pam have been in business for 18 years years and Beth if you do not mind please walk us through the milestones financially that you hit from year one through current uh, sure year one we hit six figures uh, we did 109 our, our very first year full-time in business um, we increased about a hundred thousand a year for the first three or four years uh, we hit seven figures we hit a million dollars in our seventh year in business and we've been there consistently ever since, you know, ebbs and flows, but we've always stayed above that, that high water mark uh, since our seventh year, and we just celebrated 18 years in April. So, Such, yeah, so, so wonderful. Congratulations on all of that. You. So, uh, Beth and Pam were able to break six figures year one, and we documented all of this on the road with her for four days, and she broke a million dollars in revenue and pet sitting services year seven and consistently every year so isn't that mind-blowing to be able to to take that and show all of the the ways that she was able to do that so Beth give us a little insight um, while we were there 
Um, what was your experience? What was your impression of the whole experience? It was uh, it was definitely different than than what I was expecting. Um, it was uh, you know what you what you hear about actors and having to redo things and all of that. I mean, we, we had all of that from, you know, okay, say that again. Okay, hold on before you answer. Okay, you know, let me get this um, to, uh, you know, some funny kind of quirky just kind of happen to catch on camera moments that, um, uh, you know, Pam and I were talking yesterday saying, wow, I'm glad he didn't catch this on camera. <laughs> you did get a lot of the good stuff. Um, but uh, it, it was amazing. I think especially the the pet sitter gathering that we had yeah. Thursday evening, um, the way that you were able to uh, keep the conversation flowing, we were all able to speak and say what we wanted to speak, and most importantly, your camera crew, which were just amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, we're why able. Do you, to yeah. Why do you think? What's your reason? Why are we making this movie? Why is it important to make this movie? Oh boy. Um, you know, I think it is someone else touched on, maybe Amy touched on, um, there, there still is, and we've come a long way, and when we first started our business 18 years ago, um, for every person who called asking for service, we had another one that called saying, what do you do again? Is this a kennel? What, you know, what am I going to expect out of this? Um, while the, the public has become a lot more knowledgeable, um, there still is a lot of, I don't want to say misconception, but... Uh, maybe not completely understanding what goes into our day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in the past two weeks we've gotten calls or heard of everything from lost pets to a pet that had bloat and had to be rushed to the vet to lockouts to uh, last-minute needs to um, pets with very specific feeding instructions, medication instructions, all of that, and there is still such a huge difference between the professional pet sitter and the hobbyist or the kid next door. And yeah. I think it's really important that this film illustrates the difference between that and, more importantly, why the difference is so important. Yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, really quick question, Beth. I think that might be your, you said your air conditioning. Is it possible to, uh, to turn it down? The reason I think it's yours is because when you talk, we don't hear it. Hmm. But either way, I'll just carry on. Um, so that is exactly right. And I keep hearing, uh, going back to why we're doing this, um, people keep talking about the great need to show what the professional pet sitter does and what our industry is about and to differentiate from the kid next door or a family member or a hobbyist. So our big picture is this. We are getting, we already went to Virginia, Northern Virginia, which was spectacular to do out of the gate right before this video. So we have a bigger impression and idea under our belt. What we're going to be doing from now through October, which is our live Vegas conference, that's where it's going to, that's where, all, excuse me, that's where all of this is going to culminate. We're going to be shooting at various parts of the country from now over the summer through October to really show different pet sitters. And it's not just about the uber successful like Beth and Pam. But we're going to show, this is why I need your input, because we're going to show a variety of, of, of uh, profiles of pet sitters and the different things that they do, whether you do Reiki or special needs or hospice or whether you do injections or whether you do training or, or you have a side grooming or anything that you do that is just a fascinating, inspiring story. So we're going to be following pet sitters. We're also going to be getting sit-down interviews with peripheral pet professionals who support our industry like veterinarians, including Dr. Andy Rourke, including Dr. Marty Becker. We're also getting people like Arden Moore on board. We also have the cooperation of Patty Moran and PSI and the board of directors and president of NAPS. So all of that is going to help tie in this, this impression of what the pet sitting industry is. And we also, one of the segments that we did and we're gonna to continue to do is man on the street. 
we were in a public area and were able to talk to random pet people and basically get their impression of what do you think a pet sitter is? What does a pet sitter do? What do you make of the pet sitting industry? Have you ever heard of it? And already we got such great dialogue that is going to play a part in the documentary. So we heard things like, oh my gosh, I love my pet sitter. I happen to use one and rely on one endlessly. Two, mm, I had a friend and neighbor pop in and wound up drinking all of my liquor, so I'm just a little hesitant. So this is great because we're going to be able to counter all of that perception with a variety of truths of the matter. So somebody asked, I think Jane asked, what is my why? Why am I spending time doing this? Well, I come from the acting and film world background, as you might know, and I have an itch for making these kinds of movies. And you know, I've been serving our industry since 2009. I'm passionate, I'm, I'm, I'm enthused, I'm energetic about doing this and connecting my two passions, serving the pet industry with my film background, the time is right. So what is my goal? Well, my own mother so often asks me if I'm still doing that thing with the dogs. Right? I mean, I know we all experience this from friends, from neighbors, from relatives, from strangers who say, well, well, well wait a minute, you can make money off of this, or what is this, or what's your real job, or we all experience that, right? It's about time that we step up and say, enough of that. We are legitimate, hardworking, valid, useful, professional business owners with a, a very viable career. In fact, 99% of us left another career behind. Most often, of, as, and we captured this on camera with Beth and Pam, and I know you all are no different. You left behind a cushion job, a job security, a great paycheck, benefits. Why? Not for no reason, for a very specific reason and a valid reason. And that needs to be put out to the general public and say enough's enough. You have to know what the professional pet sitting industry is, what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. So the more people that we can just get this out to, because really think about what these segments are going to show. We're showing people like Beth and Pam who have succeeded tremendously. We're also going to show a variety of people that dedicate their 24-7 their to this and get the support from other pet professional industries like the vets and the trainers and the groomers and also get the big associations like PSI and NAPS. Nobody in the general public knows what that is, but if they see this position, this can only work in our favor. So why am I doing it? Because enough is enough for having to prove what we do and have to prove our value and have to explain in great depth and detail that we are here to stay. As, 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 as long as we've been in the industry, as long as the industry has been in existence, what, 30 plus years, we are still in our infancy and the time is right to knock this out of the park and get the public on board and say, I had no clue, but I have a newfound admiration, I have a newfound respect, or this confirmed my admiration and respect. Beth, you agree with everything I'm saying or what? Absolutely, and I love your passion, Josh. It's amazing, and I think it's just what we need to bring this project to life. Well, thank you. Thank you. Let me, um, let me ask you this. We... Um, we came to you and um, I asked each of your mothers um, how proud they are of you and of course they're proud. Was it, was, was it coincidence that each of your mothers separately wound up and are working for you? How did that happen? It's, it, it's amazing that you're just pulling in from every which direction. Well, when we when we first started, you know, the first people we tapped were family members. So Pam's brother was our very first pet sitter. Uh, her mom 
still pet sits for us now. She does primarily cats because, you know, she's in her 70s now. Um, it definitely wasn't coincidence. My brother was a dog walker for us for five years. He's a musician, so it fit his schedule perfectly. Um, and I think, you know, you reach out to the folks that you trust the most to help you out in the beginning. Um, but I think everybody here has probably experienced that kind of delicate balance of the person you trust the most, but if things don't work out with them, it's kind of harder to let them go than it might be anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about the the group. We had um, obviously the the theme of this movie is professional and the wide variety of professionals and how we do, why we do, when we do, where we do. Give me insight into this networking group that you helped put together. Thank you. In your own backyard, quite literally, you got almost a dozen. And it's so funny because as we started posting pictures and updates about the people involved, you don't know how many people were like, oh my goodness, those are my idols. I can't. I look up to every <laughs> one of those people. How does, and, and, and like one quick thing before I get your take on that whole group is, the, the biggest takeaway I got, because I never met most of them in person, uh, and I certainly never was able to be around uh, such royalty. Like I said, over 150 years of collective experience, that's going to have such a great impact on camera like it did. Um, wait until you see some of that footage. Um, what, I, what I was blown away with was the support and the love between each other. So many of them got starts from each other and to this day they are like one big family. Talk to me about the importance and, and how that came about between your whole network. Yeah, that that group, Pam and I, uh, you know, we started our business in 98 and in 99 we looked around to join a network and there was no network of pet sitters in our area so we contacted PSI and got the information and went ahead and started started our own network. Um, and so the folks that were at the get together Thursday night were many of the founding members of that network. Founding members or you know very early on members. Um, and it, it was cool, you know, as we were telling stories about how we met each other, uh, to just kind of jog our memory and say, that's right, you know, this person got her start because she worked for this person and she went out on her own, then she referred this person to this person. And so we're all kind of interconnected. Um, but these are the companies that we have worked closely, uh, closest with, that we refer to on a regular basis. Um, we use ICs, and so we share, you know, some of our ICs with some of the other companies, and uh, you know, we're friends with with all of them um, on a on a personal basis. We've gotten beyond very early on. We got beyond the whole, you know, this is my competition, um, because we quickly learned, and you saw Josh in this area, how many homes there are, how many people there are, and the fact that no one company can service all of these. Nor do I even want to try. Um, so there's more than enough business to go around, so, so we feel it's so important that together we can all accomplish more. Yeah, I love it. Can I ask yeah. a question? Go ahead. Um, can you just restate the name of your company and where you're located? I know um, Jane has been asking about that. Me or everybody on board? Beth, just Beth. If Beth could please say the name oh. of your company and where she's located. Oh, sure. Um, so I'm Beth Greenberg Hotel, and I am uh, co-founder co-owner of All Friends Pet Care. We're located in Herndon, Virginia, and we service all of Northern Virginia. We have about a 35-mile radius. How yeah. many clients do you have, do you think? Active clients, we probably have about 1,600. Um, probably about 160, 170 midday, daily midday walks. Mm. And how many members of staff do you have? We have got 63, I believe. Uh, pet sitters on board right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very and, cool. thank you. And uh, to address some of the questions on the production end over there, again, uh, petsittingmovie.com is the new domain name and home for where all production will be. If you go there today, you'll see our little uh, questionnaire that we desperately ask for your support and feedback so we can have it documented and know what we should do, how we should do it, who we should talk to, and just get your uh, 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 commitment that way. Um, 
There was also a question about the end product. So we're going to be filming from now through the summer and ending at our conference uh, in October. From there, we begin post-production, which is editing, putting together all of the magnificent footage to properly tell that story and connect the dots that we require. The end result will, in fact, be a tangible, fully produced, full-length professional DVD that will be for sale online. and. Um, because I have experience in the in in the film world, I have every every hope and intention to get this on Netflix and to get this on Amazon and of course all of the other peripheral streaming websites. That is a real possibility. That's the goal. So you'll be able to watch it. You'll be able to download it. You'll be able to purchase it and own it as a DVD. Uh, we'll also try to submit this to the festivals to get some other traction. We'll also try to get it distributed to certain TV and cable networks. So this, as I've been saying, is all in for me. This is not a side project. In order to make this happen, this is my, this is everything, right? This is why I'm so passionate and so needing everybody on board in every way possible. This is all it. You know, it's a, uh, it's, it's a commitment, as you know, as you can imagine, to make a movie. Uh, we travel. I have a full production crew. We have camera. We have sound. We have production assistants. We have editing needs. So there is a we we have a, a, a production photographers on board, uh, graphic artists. So so there's a whole thing going on to really make this as tangible and successful as possible. So the more you can get involved, the better. In about one month's time, we're going to be launching our official crowdfunding campaign, which means in exchange for appropriate reward levels and perks, and believe me, we have some magnificent perks and rewards, uh, depending on what you can contribute, we're going to ask for that. But in addition, what we're also putting together is not just for you to, uh, out of your own pocket or out of your own business, to contribute a bit financially towards the budget so this can be as successful of a reality as possible. But what we're also going to help you do is sort of raise funds in your own community. So if you can get a little bit from your clients, if you tell them what you're doing, how you're doing it, hopefully some of your clients or a lot of your clients would like to contribute to your financial contribution. So in, in, in a few weeks time, you're going to get a lot more details on that. But do know that we need, we desperately need and require as much participation and contribution as, as possible. And we're going to make it as easy and rewarding as possible. Sound good? Sound like a good plan? Josh, I know that, uh, it's Amy, I know that June yep. has requested to speak. I think you actually facilitate that. Ooh, yes. Thank you. Um, I'm going to see how I can get... June on board. Thank you, June, by the way. I'm going to push the button. Uh, it says invite as speaker. So I just pushed a button. And uh, hopefully, June, if you see something pop on your screen, please do get on camera. I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, let me see. Uh, Oh yeah, one oh, of the while you're catching up, Josh. I yep. was just going to mention at one point, and I'm not sure who mentioned it. They were talking about different elements of professionalism. They were talking about certification, attending conferences, things like that. I kind of feel an obligation to point out that if anybody is interested, we have a wonderful conference that is going on. It is Pet Sitting Live, where you'd find the information. It is in October. It is in Las Vegas, and it is the friendliest conference out there. We also have the most amazing food. So if yeah. anyone is interesting, it's PetSittingLive.com. We hope you will look at it for more information on how to become more professional and know more about the job that you do. Exactly. And speaking of our conference in October, I want everybody who wants to participate, not only behind the scenes, which I, I really need you to, to, to submit your ideas, your thoughts, 
and uh, uh, suggestions, whether you want to uh, say, uh, come film me and my business, or you know of people and organizations and uh, uh, pet professionals who we desperately should get in front of. If you are at our October event, you will easily at that point be able to get on camera. And it might not be as scary as you think. It's not live, it's all recorded, so we can we can work with you because we need you, right? So if you're at our conference, you'll have a one-on-one -on -one time to really get on camera. So um, June said she's um, she lost the connection. Let me see if I could, uh, whoops, June, I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you need to request again or not, but uh, let me know if you want to get on camera. Um, also, one interesting thing is since since the moment that I had this idea, I knew that a name of the film, a title of the film, is going to be very, very important. Now, I'm not terribly concerned, and I don't try to force a name. I'm just waiting for one to really develop naturally through the process. But if you have any thoughts or ideas in that questionnaire on PetSittingMovie.com, you will see one of the questions is, uh, what should we name the movie? So if you today, tomorrow, along the way, have any ideas or, or thoughts on a title, get them in because this is going to be our industry's project. And any way you contribute, any way you will be uh, uh, on the in the credits, you have a chance to get your logo, your website, your business name. Uh, if if you don't want to participate on camera, there are still ways to get publicity for your business, either in the opening credits throughout the film or at the end credits. Everybody who participates, everybody who plays a part, I want to reward you with publicity and thanks in the movie on some way. So it's it's our movie. I don't know how many more times I can stress that, right? Oh, good. Okay. Excellent. Beth, are you still there? I am still here. So you mentioned early on that um, you you had a certain impression or the production didn't. Uh, what was your, what did you think this was going to be like from the production side or from your side? And, and how did that, that really differ? I don't know. I think maybe I thought that you all would just kind of be flies on the wall, like just kind of sitting back and set up a camera and we're just going about our, you know, daily business and you're kind of capturing that, but it was a lot more structured than I was expecting. Um, just, you know, I want to make sure I get this and, um, you know, when you when you pull the key out of the file cabinet, make sure you, you turn this way and then, you know, turn the other way and uh, there was just a lot, lot more structure to it than I was expecting. Um, I loved yeah. it though because I really do feel it's important all the elements that were captured I feel are important to capture on film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's so um, obviously so legitimate and uh, deliberate I should say because if you've never been part of a movie especially a documentary you like, like you said yeah part of it we just said we did say go about your business and we can capture it in the office. Uh, and, and we went from there, but also based on what I knew we needed to show, uh, we needed to, 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 to bring you guys to that, to that road so we can get it, including the fact that your pet sitter, Alicia, my goodness, like I said, we shadowed her for a day. We, went on, we must have gone on three or four different visits, all with permission, all thankfully with the client's permission. It was amazing. I even got to meet Mr. Lizard that is, in fact, a lizard. Uh, we fed him live crickets. We got to talk about how it's not just dogs, cats, or even birds. And then we were able to connect the fact that it's not just a pet sitter, albeit a professional pet sitter, going in to Mr. Lizard. Beth, you were very clear on you connect the pet parent with the most appropriate, not only location specific, but background and training and expertise. So Alicia, for example, I've learned and we've learned on camera, she has not only cats and dogs at home, but she has reptiles at home. So whenever you get a reptile call, I imagine, she's your go-to person, right? 
Absolutely. And, and, you know, that's part of the reason why we have so many pet sitters, because as we bring on more and more sitters, it allows everybody to specialize. So we do have some sitters who only want to deal with exotics or only cats or only do overnights. Um, so someone like Alicia, who does it all, obviously, is, is gold for us. Um, but we absolutely do. We're able to, to match up the client and the pet sitter, and that's something we, we pride ourselves on, and that's something that we, um, you know, use as a marketing tool when we're chatting with new clients. Mm-hmm. Amy, let me ask you... Let me ask you this question. Am I absolutely crazy and out of my mind for pursuing this project? No, I think, but you bring a wonderful exuberance and excitement to it. You live and breathe this industry. Um, you have provided backups to people on technical issues in the middle of the night. You do everything that you possibly can to help people look their best to their clients. And you deal with people from so many different levels. We got a call yesterday from somebody who is just has just started his business. You also deal with people like Beth, who have been doing it quite a long time, have lots of experience, have, have a huge amount of people. I think because you enjoy working with people in general and relating to people at so many different levels, you have the great breadth of experience that will allow a great, great portrait to be shown. You're interested in people's life, lives, what they bring to it. Sometimes when people will tell you, I've been doing this and I started at a really low point in my life, you show so much interest in that. So the enthusiasm that you bring and the filmmaking experience that you have, and even to some degree the technical experience that you have working with websites, working with marketing, you bring this all to that and it will make you will make a perfect partner to the industry to bring this forward and let everybody know what actually is a pet sitter is it the person next door is it somebody who's got the training who's got the experience who's got the insurance mm -hmm. I think you're a great person to bring this forward to everybody you've got the whole wall of experience behind you I really appreciate that. Thank you. And um, let me uh, uh, extend on one thing you said. I learned so much from our man on the street portion, and we're going to be doing this in every city we go to where we, we set up in a centralized location and just talk to quite random people about what makes a good pet sitter or what's your impression of a pet sitter or have you ever used one or fill in the blank a pet sitter is and we got so much great insight that can help us tell the story even further, including this, this was one of the weirdest slash funniest and bizarre ones. So a woman is walking towards me in this like public square uh, out by Beth there that she uh, led us to. And uh, I said, uh, um, I, I think to get her attention, I was like, uh, um, excuse me, miss, uh, have, you ever, uh, have you ever used a, uh, a pet sitter before? And she says, without missing a beat, we don't do pet sitters in our household <laughs> and just kept on walking and I'm like wait wait what we don't do pet sitters in our house I mean like what kind of imp and sadly she just booked away from us as quickly as she could so I was like wait what do you mean you don't do pet sitters what does that even mean but that's sort of the point right people have this impression and there was another woman we spoke to that um, she knew what pet sitters were and she knew what we do but she said, I, I use a neighbor, and I said, why a neighbor? And we got into that dialogue, and I said, have you ever considered a professional? Because what if, and, and she thought, here's the thing, people don't know what they don't know, so in her world, a neighbor for free at this very moment in time is acceptable because she has no reason to go elsewhere or to pay for the service. So I said, what if something goes wrong and the neighbor doesn't understand that there is an emergency in front of them? Or how are they going to detect a certain thing? Or what it, and her response was, well, I have a healthy dog. So as pet sitters, I was like, wow, that's such an intriguing point of uh, education we need to handle. Because people may know that we exist, 
and they might feel comfortable because they have a healthy dog at the moment. So this might be a good angle to address on your site, a good angle to write blogs about, or a good angle to just personally try to understand, okay, what is my response to that? If somebody thinks that, well, I don't need to pay for this because I have a healthy dog at the moment. So what we should do is think three, four, five steps beyond as to what we do and why it's so important we do. So the reason I know we're all in agreement is is education, is to show what we do. So I'm bringing light in every regard to the depth and breadth, right? B-R-E-D-T-H. I think that's a word, right, Amy? You always keep it. Yeah. The depth and breadth of our industry and, and how we do it. So there are light bulbs. So there is a respect and appreciation and an admiration because it's now. The time is now. We're all spinning our wheels. We're all waking up. We're all doing this for such personal reasons that those reasons need to be shown on film. So the more you are in tune with why you're doing it, the more we'll be able to bring all that to light and hit the public over the head that this is not something somebody just wakes up and says, eh, I'll do it. You know that, I know that, let's get the public to know that. Hey Josh, can I just add one more thing? I love it, yes. It's Beth. So I just wanted to say that Colin, your cinematographer, who is amazing by the way, Thank I you. think is the perfect person to be filming this project because he's not in the industry. Mm -hmm. So where you and I are on camera talking about things, Colin would stop us and say, wait, 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 wait. you're talking about keys. Are these client keys? We need to, you know, explain to the viewer exactly what we're talking about. So I think it, it'll, between your knowledge and your enthusiasm and your, you know, being in the industry and him being outside of the industry and, and just kind of having, having that eye on the camera, um, I think the two combined is just going to create an amazing finished product. I am so glad you said that. First of all, thank you, everybody, for the support, the enthusiasm, the energy. I want to keep it going. If if you if you love this project so far, if you love what we are doing, if you want to continue to be part of it, just 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 write yes in the in, in there. I I just want to see more support because I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna uh, this chat log becomes archived and I'm gonna print it out. So if anything, do know that everything you write is gonna be recorded and printed up, and I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna sleep with it. I'm gonna embrace it. But uh, something uh, Beth said about my, uh, my, my crew, Colin, who is our cinematographer, Trocon, who is our sound guy, Jennifer, who is our production assistant. Let me talk to you for a minute about Colin. I've worked, I've, Colin has become one of, my, one of my buddies. Colin's my best friend. We don't get to see each other or, or speak as often as I'd like because he's off shooting TV, shooting films. I'm here in Jersey doing my thing, but this was the project when I called him and I, 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 just, I just said, yo, I got something for us. What are you doing for the next six months? Let's do this together. And as Beth pointed out, he is perfect because he's out of the industry, so he has an eye for film and for movie and for storytelling, but not for our industry. So after a few different things that we do, I pull him aside and say, did that make sense to you? What, what, what was the big, biggest thing that you made from that content-wise? What did that mean to you? And that he's able to contribute. So great, great notice, Pep, because he is an outsider, but he knows movies, he knows stories, and he knows uh, dialogue. So I like that. Thank you. Well, thank um, you. Josh, can I say something, Amy? Please do. I also think that uh, you mentioned too about talking to people who've come to pet sitting for at different points in their lives. I believe you talked at, uh, about one person who I think was a single mom, and she was making she was making her income from pet sitting. There, um, there are other people we know who have been who are senior citizens. And they came to it after, say, taking a package or retiring from whatever they've been doing for a long time. That's another, another, just a different place in life. People are so very different in this because it's not necessarily something you came straight out of school or straight out of certification and you went to. So it's, it, that's another aspect of it. Also, people built up their businesses. People who never expected to be in their own business, to own their own business, 
they came to it also to pet sitting and found themselves all of a sudden they're able to take care they can set their own schedule they can to some degree define their income they can decide whether they're going to hire people whether they're going to do it on their own whether they're going to supplement another income and these are all different aspects that that might be explored in the documentary absolutely true I love the feedback thank you and something Connie wrote says that it will be wonderful to have something polished and professional to share with clients, family, and friends. And that is it. That's my goal. That's what we're doing. You are going to have something polished, something professional, something legit to show, oh, you want to know what we do or what I do? Here you go. Or look at that movie. Or have you heard of this? Watch this. You are absolutely correct. That's my why. Yes. Josh, if you look on the side, on the comments, two people just said, what is it? Katie said she was over 50 and got laid off. Mm -hmm. And I think somebody else said the, said, said the same thing, that yeah. she was over 40, I think, and got and came to it. Yeah, yeah, she said Katie 3 said she got laid. Somebody said she got laid yeah. off in June 31. But this is what I'm saying. It's a really interesting industry because you're not, the demographics are all over the place. You're I love getting, it. You're getting kids who are doing it during college. You know, just to kind of keep keep money coming in. You're getting people who are older who are just going on a second or third career. You're getting people who want to start their own business because maybe their kids are just moving out of the house. Uh -huh. And that's a really cool thing that I love talking about. You get some people who've done college who have graduate degrees. You have some people who didn't and are, are so excited to be doing to getting respect in an industry that's still starting and still flourishing. Yeah. That's one of the cool reasons that we love pet sitters because they're so they come from so many different places and that's why that this is going to be such a great documentary because it's going to show the widespread all the wonderful people who are in the industry yeah and uh, thank you for acknowledging and saying that I love that like I said a little bit ago we all come from second or third careers for one reason or another and it's no joke to either get laid off or just throw in the towel and say you know what yes I have security yes I have a paycheck yes I have this but there's a calling for me over here and two people we were lucky enough I say lucky enough because we didn't plan on it while we were ingrained with Beth and Pam we happened to cross paths and then we sat down and lit and fired up the camera uh, with Pam's mother and Beth's mother who separately work and worked with the company they are both retired yet they both do integral pet sitting visits and office stuff with the business and it's fantastic we also shadowed one of their pet sitters Alicia who is a single mother of two she has a teenager and a younger child five years old and we asked her about this and she actually started working for Beth and Pam while she had her then full-time job but guess what she told us on camera which is a fantastic part of her video and story she started making more money pet sitting that it didn't make sense for her to keep her career now that little piece of information alone don't you think that the general public is going to be fascinated and surprised by that wait, wait, wait a second you had this great job and yet pet sitting you're able to make more yes she's able to make more money supporting herself and two kids from Beth and Pam's company so it's fantastic how this is a legit business and that's part of my why we have to show the, the the public that we are legitimate we are valid we are important we are necessary and we are here to stay and then show how that counters from the neighbor the friend and the family and what we do so we're gonna hit them over the head with all this incredible stuff I like how one comment from Lori says I don't know anyone who planned on being a pet sitter yeah and there's another comment from June that says this is what God wanted me to do Wow and that yeah. that's a big thing when people can find something that they really they feel comfortable in I'm sorry someone else also said that she was a teacher and she loves going to deal with the animals because they don't talk back and they're always happy to see her <laughs> these are the sort of things it seems like there's this kind of joy in pet sitters they're very few who complain about it most people are just so happy 
to be pet sitters, and I'm sure that that comes out in their day-to-day -day interactions with both the pets and the pet parents. Yeah, and one of the things that I say too on that note is nobody, uh, nobody said I want to be a pet sitter when I grow up, although this coming generation may actually have that uh, ability because, you know, when we were growing up, certainly who even knew of this, but the, the next generation, sure, pet sitting could and should be a, oh, I want to be a pet sitter, I want to be a pet sitting business owner when I grow up. But yeah, nobody planned on it, which is, which is the most fascinating and perfect thing for us. So thanks for pointing that out. So one of the other things I want to highlight, um, I've, I, I've hit over our heads about why we're doing this and what the end result is. I think you all get that. And I have to reiterate the great need to get you involved. I desperately need everybody involved. I need your heads involved. I need your ideas. I need you to connect me with the right people. And I need, when our crowdfunding campaign goes live, I need your financial support. Whether it's $25 or $2,500, you know, whatever it is, every dollar counts, as they say. I am desperately going to need this. This has a big budget. And in order to make it a success and reality, I need to get all of you involved. And with that, you're going to get and receive equally wonderful rewards for your contribution in any regard. But also, besides that way, digitally to contribute and to get your ideas over to me, I want to know from you guys who I have to talk to, what pet sitting professionals I must get on camera, who I should cross paths with, who I should approach, and where we should go. Right now, we do have a couple of extra spots for us to tour around the country. We are planning on going to Atlanta in the next month. We're planning on going to the Los Angeles area in the next month. We're also planning on going to North Carolina to, uh, to be with Patty Moran and PSI. So while we're there, we'll also extend our stay. Um, and then we'll be in Las Vegas in October. And then I'm on the East Coast. I'm in New Jersey. So if you're in New Jersey, if you're in the Philly area, the Connecticut area, the New York area, uh, you are in. You know, that's an easy thing. We could easily get to you tomorrow, right? So um, I, I, I've been getting emails. And um, so uh, Lori asks a good question. How do you choose your states? We don't, right? Um, the, the states we've already chosen that I've listed, we already have specific contacts and pet sitters or people that we're talking to there. But I need, if you are in a state where we can follow you around and tell your story and show your environment, let's do it. Or if you're in a state where you can gather 10 or 15 or 20 or 100 pet sitters where we can do an evening together and shoot that whole big thing, then yes, let's do it. The sky is the limit. You know, like I said, I am all in. I'm putting everything I have into this project, and I hope you'll join. How's it looking, uh, Amy, in the sidebar? Everyone good? Everybody's saying where they're from, and it looks great. Good. I tell yeah. you, I wish we could go visit everybody because it sounds like people are all over. Look, we've got Jupiter, Atlanta, Brooklyn, Colorado, uh, New Hampshire. We, we always have to consider um, going to New England because that's where Pam Ranheim is. And you know, she has Newfoundland dogs, and I love Newts. So. <laughs> Beth, what are your uh, thoughts as we wrap up this production meeting? Uh, I'm just, I'm so thrilled for this project. I'm so um, honored to have been kind of the starting guinea pig to uh, to get it going. Uh, we're, we're really um, excited for the finished product. And um, I think uh, you're really on to something here. The, the excitement and the enthusiasm from just everyone in the industry is amazing. Mm. And I think it's really going to make for a wonderful finished product, and, and I just can't wait to see see what's next. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's invigorating, but like I said, it's scary. <laughs> I'm scared. Help me. Well, so is everything to. worth doing, right? I know. I, I, you know, I've spent much of my life um, scared out of my mind and uh, anxious. I don't think I'm pulling that wool over anybody's eyes. But uh, this is no different. Uh, I, I'm scared out of my mind, but 
it feels right. And it is those it are it, it is those scary moments where you say, you know what, it's scary as anything, but that proves that it's necessary. And if nothing else, I always inch towards the fear and the scary stuff because that's when I get my most success and outcome. And I think this is it. But who's scared with me? Yes, let's make this a fantastic production because it's already been proven. I'm glad that we had last week to go out and uh, do it and do it right and follow you around. So if you go to PetSittingMovie.com, that is the place where I desperately need your input today. And then also going forward, that will be the house for all things Pet Sitting Movie. Any final words? Well, I just wanted to. Yep, go ahead, Beth. Sorry, just wanted to uh, give one more plug for the Vegas conference. For anyone who hasn't signed up, who's on the fence thinking about signing up, um, my business partner Pam and I are doing a, a three-hour masterclass on Sunday, the very first day of the conference. It's included, included in with, your registration. Yeah, there you yep. go. I'm sorry to overdo included it. Included in your registration, so you will get tons of information about running your business, about finding balance, about marketing, about managing staff, just everything you've wanted to know condensed in three hours. It's going to be a fantastic masterclass, so I hope you'll consider joining us, not just for that, but for the entire conference. Yeah, and um, our camera crew is going to be there, so that's actually going to be part of the documentary. Um, Lori said, please share what you are afraid of. I am afraid of getting this right, right? I'm afraid for the success of this. Too often you hear about fear of failure, but there is actually fear of success that holds people back. Well, what am I afraid of? This is such an important big project with a lot of moving parts. I just hope I get it right, you know? I'm scared of screwing it up. I'm scared of it not being, you know, those are just the voices in your head scared, but I never doubt it. I wake up each day invigorated, excited to, to, to do this. I spent four days away from home, which part of what Colin is so good at, I was like, uh, can I just have a few minutes? I want to check in with my wife. And he said, no, 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 no. This is a documentary. The cameras will stay. So <laughs> I had no privacy, a little bit of privacy. But you'll see how taking me away from my home life, many of you know, I got, I got my Danica, my daughter Danica, who's three years old. I got my boy Harrison, my son, who's one years old. Everybody says this is a critical time in their life. Don't leave their side. Well, honey, I gotta go on the road for four days, and then I'm going all these other places. So, so it's it's trying. You know, I'm the one who bathes Danica and Harrison. I'm the one who tucks Danica in at night. Me and Heather divide and conquer. My wife, by the way, she deserves so much credit for. Yes, honey, whatever you want, honey. That's you know, that's 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 how I hear her support, right? <laughs> so. She she takes Harrison to bed. I take Danica to bed, and it's it's a little difficult. But this is my calling here and now, and this is what we're gonna do. And if you guys have any other last words, get them out on the sidebar here in the chat, because I'm gonna after this recording, I'm gonna go read them all and um, go from there. Also, of course, PetSittingMovie.com is the house where we need you today and going forward. That's basically it. I want to thank you for joining this production meeting. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Amy, for joining us. And um, we'll keep the conversation going. Thanks for inviting me, Josh. And next time, everyone will get to see me. <laughs> I know. We can't see you we'll right there. We'll work out the technical difficulties for next time. Well, if nothing else, they'll see you in the movie. I know. Well, I can't wait to see that. All right, cool. Well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. This is the beginning. The the thing is, uh, what is this? What am I doing here? Is this a um, a roller coaster? The roller coaster is is moving up the hill. Let's keep it going. I appreciate it, guys. Our industry. Let's do it. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone.